Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's this video we are going to be looking at my iPhone 6s. Um, it was released in I believe September 2015. Um, I purchased this uh, from private seller about six months ago. Uh, it was still sealed in its box and um, I'm particularly uh, fond of this particular model um, mainly because it's got um, the headphone jack on it. It was the last model that came with a headphone jack. After that, uh, you had like an adapter to put into here. Um, and at the time, I didn't want to make that transition. Um, I was using headphones and kept on pulling on this part here where you charge, charge the phone. So if you've got your headphones snagged up on something it would then stretch on this port i did try some later models but yeah i'm just particularly keen on this one so um yeah i managed to pick this up it's a 128 gigabyte model uh only problem is with it is that the battery isn't as good as it should be uh i've been using it for about six months but i should imagine where it had been in storage for so long um poor blind what seven seven and a half years uh it still does hold a charge but the battery does get warm if it's been overly used and I've tried doing soft resets and all sorts of different things to try and get some more life out of it but I think now I've got to the point where I just want to change the battery in it so I picked one up uh, off eBay this one here so um, I will link that in the description so today I'm going to try and change it out um, we are what mid-November now 2013 um, I did a firmware update on this device yesterday. Uh, it's now running on 15.8. So they are still releasing security fix updates for it. Um, but you know, considering, say, like my iPad, that's running, uh, updated that yesterday, and it's running 16.72. So they are not rolling out any major or up-to-date firmware updates for this device anymore. But for what I need it for, and it suits my purpose, and um, you can still pick them up if you're lucky to find them. If this is if you've been looking for one, or if you've got an old one that you maybe you just picked up or that you used to own or whatever. Um, hopefully, this video will help you today. Uh, just before I get going, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has been watching my videos, and uh, any thumbs up that have been coming my way, and anyone that has subscribed to my channel, it is uh, all really appreciated. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content so far okay so first things first I need to get these two screws out the bottom here so just where you put the uh, charger in there's two very small screws either side of it and you're gonna need a particular screwdriver to do it it's not like a Phillips I'm not sure actually what it is but it's it's very small and you can actually pick these screwdriver kits up um say on ebay um they come with like spudges and these little picks and various screwdrivers suction cups very cheaply so if you are going to tackle this job you do need to invest in that first of all but yeah these screws are very very small i don't know if i can get these on camera for you oh <laughs> that's how small it is okay So yeah, need to put these somewhere safe. Okay. Next thing we're going to need is a um, a suction cup. We need to put that over this area here where the home button is. Not many uh, iPhones have these home buttons anymore. Um, so yeah, we need to um, put like a suction cup over that. One of those. And then we're going to pull up on this bottom edge here to take the screen away. You have to excuse my screen protector. Um, I need to refit another one. Some uh, air bubbles up here and here. But today's not about that. Um, but that's definitely another job that needs doing at some point. 
I always carry these in a protective case. In fact, I may even have to heat it up. I think it's very um, a bit out of shape. So I'm just going to use my hot air station on it. Just warm it up a little bit. Hopefully, it'll help. I've got this on its lowest setting, 100 degrees. So we don't want to cook it, we just want to get it a bit more pliable than what it is. Um, so to get this edge lifted along here I'm going to use one of these case opening tools um, and then while I'm doing it I'm going to pull up on this ring pull and see if I can separate these two. I've actually got a couple of these so I'm not sure which one's going to be best for the job. Just try them both. do need to try and get this in between. to get this between this gap at the moment there is no gap so just as we pull up on the ring pull I'm just going to run this along the edge here and I can already feel it starting to have some movement in it this one's never been open before so I was expecting it to be a little bit stubborn So now it's gone, it's gone between them now and I can feel it. So once we've actually got this underneath, we can start bringing it round. I'm wondering whether, oh there we go. I don't want to push it too far under so I'm just gently bending as I go like that just literally just gently twisting and you can see there now starting to get a gap between them the trick is just to take it slow there is no rush if you're going to do this in a hurry you'll probably end up breaking something And these screens are easily cracked, damaged, so yeah. This bit don't wanna don't wanna be rushing. But all the time I'm pulling up still. down I don't want to go anywhere near where the volume buttons are or anything like that with that plastic pry tool this can come back off again now I did not need that anymore so we're getting there
don't know if you can see that but it's um see the strands of adhesive there holding this down still like attached I'm just breaking my fingers through putting my fingers through them these strands until we get to the point where we can actually lift this right up but we can't actually take it off yet it's still screwed down okay so we're in um, first thing to do is we need to take actually take this screen away um, some people will probably say you don't need to everyone's got their own methods for me personally I think you have to take it off anyway there may be a way of doing it without taking it off but I just prefer it out of the way if, if possible so um, this area here this metal plate is the first area to come off there's four screws holding this down and I think if I remember rightly they are different size screws I'll have to double check when I take it out it's been a while since I've done one of these so I've got this one here Again, these screws are so small so wherever you're working just make sure that you're working somewhere where you can keep an eye on these things I mean this one's even smaller than the other ones I don't know if I can get this on camera but it's basically a spec so I'm just going to put that there in the top left and then this one here I'm going to put to the top right it's just alongside it there and slightly lower and then these bottom two going to put them all accordingly so they all I know where they go back but they are different lengths that one there is definitely longer but they're, they're all so small it's hard to it's hard to know for exactly sure okay and then that one's going to go there so I know what order they go in by the by the shape of that and then I'm going to put this plate right next to it like that okay right next thing so we've got there's a little tab just here and I'm gonna just lit, just pry that up just like that that one there is now away and then there's another one to the right of it and I'm just gonna do the same with that I'm just gonna pry that one up as well I'm pretty sure you have to take this screen off to get to the battery uh, to get to the battery connector anyway. So that's that one as well. And it's still slightly stuck down at the top edge here, so I'm just going to gently wiggle it away. In fact, this ribbon cable is is stuck down a little bit as well. So be careful not to rip it. Actually that saying that there's a third connector as well. There we go. So we add three all in all. And she takes away now. So that's the front screen off. And then more of this glue around the edges here. I don't want to lose all of it. I'm just gonna take off the bits that are, are no longer usable. Um so yeah there was one connector there, one connector there, and one connector to the side. So three in all, and that'll help that remove the, the front screen. Okay, so next part we've got. Right, so this um, this screen, I just prefer to do this kind of job without this on there, because in a short while, this battery is gonna have to come out and it's stuck down hard. Um, very strong adhesive from the factory so um, I don't want this screen in the way me personally when I do a job like this I'd rather have this sensitive piece of easily breakable part of the phone away so for the sake of a few screws and a few um, connectors it's 
I personally think it's better just to have this out of the way. But everyone does things differently. Um, to actually access the uh, battery connectors for this, uh, they're actually under this plate here. Um, so I'm going to take these two out. Again, I'm not sure if they're different size screws. They probably are. Um, so I'm just going to set it down in a way that I remember how it goes back. same with the plate itself um, it'd be very easy to put this in the wrong way around you know if I was to put it back like that so again I'm just going to set it down in the way that it came out okay so now I can see it looks like this one here is the battery connector so I'm just gonna get a small screwdriver and just see if this will lift goes yeah so that's the battery connector that one there right so yeah the next part is the bit that I'm not looking forward to and that's um, removing this battery and um, as I said before it's it's in there very tight on some double-sided strips that run down here two of them if I remember rightly so yeah to get these out we're going to have to pry it up so before I do that I'm going to see if I can warm it up for a little while um, again just at 100 degrees I'm not going to go too mad with it just to try and help that glue underneath obviously working on uh, around the battery here we don't need to do too too much on the front edge mainly on the back that's where the glue's at the risky thing is obviously is that you can bend the um, bend this case when you're pro when you're prying up on this battery. So hopefully doing this first will, will help soften the glue a little bit. But as usual, I don't really know what I'm doing, so <laughs> I'm just I'm just winging it. It's getting warm now. It'd be actually interesting to see the battery that I've had sent to me. Um, the one that I bought. I bought this about six months ago, this battery. When I got when I got the actual phone, thinking that I'm just going to have to swap the battery straight away. Uh, I didn't use it straight away. Um, I thought I'd just see how this goes because it wasn't terrible it was holding a charge but it slowly got worse and it was never great to begin with so I've been putting this job off as it was a brand new sealed phone I don't like taking taking these apart when they're like that I mean it's it just feels it just feels like a bit of a unnecessary job but yeah it's warm to the touch now so I'm gonna see if we can um get something in here now to pry this up. I'm going to try this first of all, I'm not holding out too much hope to be honest, that this is going to shift it. It's just so stuck down. I mean it's really really in there. I'm going to go from the bottom edge. is going to bend and break no matter what happens it's starting to chew these two strips up quite bad but that's just the nature of it they're not really you know once they put these in they weren't expecting I think people to 
take them out and they're not designed to be easily, you know, they don't want to move them around. Was it overkill from the factory? Mm, possibly. So the one I'm using now is a um, another one that you can just easily get online. But you know, the main thing is it's plastic. I don't really want to scratch all this up. Getting this glue off at the end is going to be uh, is going to be fun. What's left behind. But yeah, it's very, it's really on there. Right, well I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be at this for probably the next five minutes or so, I should imagine. So I am going to keep on pressing this through um, and then um, when I've got this battery off, I'll bring you back. Okay, I won't be long okay so that is the battery removed uh, I'm now going to take a look at the uh, replacement and see what the part numbers are saying hopefully I bought this as a genuine replacement so fingers crossed it is a like for like So the A, um, they're both 3.82 volts, 6.55 WHR, and they both got the same APN number, 616-00036. And everything else looks to be exactly the same. Uh, they're both 1715 MAH. So on the face of it, this one looks to be an exact genuine replacement um, but I will link this in the description this battery um, anyway okay so next thing is to put the new battery in and stick it down it does come with a couple of new um, stick down strips so yeah we're gonna put those in So when removing this other battery, the old battery, um, obviously as you saw I started down this bottom end. Um, I wanted to stay away from all these connectors and stuff on this side of the board. Um, and it's, uh, I took my time, it probably took five, five minutes or more just slowly prying my way through. Uh, most of the glue came out with the old battery. Um, anything left I was able just to kind of pick it off. Um, but yeah, as I say, best thing to do is just take your time with it. You don't want to put too much bend on these as well. Obviously, you need to be careful. If they split, then you could end up with a small fire, I should imagine. I don't know. Either way, you need to just respect what they are. Um, so I just took my time with that. Uh, to put this new one in, I'm just going to um, just prepare the base here with a bit of um, alcohol and um, just clean this area up give these um, new sticky tape the best chance of staying down. Right, okay, so need to make sure that we put the take the right edge off. So this extra long tab here that's the area that you take off first so it makes sure it stays to this backing you don't want to take this one off first so just remove it like that and then I'm going to put place this into here press these down make sure they're good and stuck and then we can peel this top layer off and then the new battery I'm just going to place it in this bottom 
area first because it was pushed right up against it. And I make sure it's in line down this edge here. grab a cloth and just press this down okay so the first part needs to go back in is this battery connector here feels good and then we need to put the cover back onto that and these screws are different lengths the smaller one goes in the top right and the bigger one bottom left definitely helps to have a magnetic screwdriver at this point And now it's time for the screen to go back on. So I'm going to do it the same way I did the, the way it came out, and it was just sitting on this top edge here. There's a um, there's a little clip. It appears to be a little clip just here. to get that to focus um, but this little clip here looks like it sits over the um, metal edge like that and we have three ribbon cables here um, this top one I'm going to put in first so I'm not going to force it I'm just going to literally just keep on gently pressing down until it finds its home But again, it's just time consuming, but there is there's no rush, so better get it better get it right. If it doesn't feel like it's gonna go, then it's it's not in the right place. It should just pop home when it's ready to. I can still that sort of went in, but it, it didn't feel like it went in properly. that right hand edge wasn't right I tell you what let's get this under the microscope it might be easier to do it through that I'll be right back
Okay guys, so you can see from under the microscope there, um, just need to make sure that they're pressed right, pressed right down. Um, if your eyesight isn't that great, a microscope is always the way forward. Um, so I think this is now ready just to be pressed back together again. I'm going to assume that this battery is going to be dead flat. Um, everybody has their own way of doing things. What's right, what's wrong, I've just got my own ways. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into the charger. I'm going to assume it's flat. If it is flat, I'm going to wait till there's enough power in there so it turns itself on. And then I'm going to immediately turn itself off. And then I'm just going to charge it up for two three hours and then when it's fully charged I'm going to turn it back on again and uh, with the power cable still connected I'm then going to do a soft reset on it and uh, hopefully calibrate the battery um, as I say everybody does things their own way that's just the, the way I do it um, so yeah let's see um let's see if this will go back down together again okay so yeah all these will press back in again oh actually before I do that I think what I need to do is to put the cover back on so let's do that um, I need something really to just prop this top up you can see now why that I removed this screen to change that battery <laughs> I just don't see how you could well you can probably do it but to pry on this and the way I was having to manipulate my hands and move it around to be able to get this old battery out this was just better out of the way so let's pop this back in again I just need to keep moving this forward so there's enough on there to make sure that ribbon cable doesn't move around too much right and these screws absolutely tiny wow okay it's going to take me a bit of time I think to find it on the top of it okay. You know, it's like when you stare at something so much it just becomes a blur. Started. Okay, now we can tighten them down. That's fun. Right, okay. So I'm going to do the top edge first. Just feel it just just drop it up under this bottom shell here. You just feel it just sort of slide in.
just going to just press it all down now around the edges. Okay, just the two screws now for the um, for the bottom by the charging port. Again, I'm not sure what this screw, screwdriver is, but it's, it's definitely not a Phillips. Ooh. Luckily for me, I'm working in an area where I can find things easy, but yeah, if you drop that on the floor and carpet or something, definitely going to need a magnet or something to find it, I would have thought. See if we can actually put it into the phone. Get it started that way. I don't think that screwdriver's magnetised. Okay, that's back together again. I don't think it's going to turn on. Let's give it a go. Ah, okay, we've got life. And there we go. It's actually got 63% on it. As I say, I'm not sure if that's calibrated or not. Um, so I am going to, um, in this case, I'm going to let it run down. Um, I assumed that it was going to be completely flat. So I'm going to use the phone, I'm going to let it run down until it turns itself off. And then I'm just going to leave it off for a little while, um, maybe an hour or two. And then, um, as I said before, I'm going to plug it in and then after I've plugged it in, I'm going to um, turn it back off again and let it charge up, turned off, uh, two or three hours. And then I'm going to turn it back on again with the power cable still connected. I'm then going to do a soft reset on it and hopefully that will calibrate it. Whether that's right, whether it's wrong, as I said before, we've all got our own ways of doing things. It's just the way that I do it. Anyway, guys, I think that's it for another video. Um, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found this informative, useful. Um, and uh, I will be back soon with another video. Appreciate all the support. It truly means a lot. And um, I will catch you guys on the other side. Many thanks for watching. Take good care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.